Hello, I'm Bill Walden introducing my prototype for a linear solar array. Archimedes is said to have defended the city of Syracuse using soldiers armed with polished bronze shields to burn Roman ships. As cool as it may sound to build a death ray, most current concentrated solar power projects are dedicated to the production of electricity. This graphic has one using recirculated water to capture the sun's energy for driving a steam turbine. Yet most large-scale plants use molten salts as their thermal medium, which have higher boiling points and heat capacity. This one, called Crescent Dunes, is a 110 megawatt plant in Nevada. Since it was built in 2009, the industry has made great strides in further reducing its cost per kilowatt through the economy of scale. But further reductions are needed, and the greatest opportunity for improvement lay with the mirrors, or heliostats, that reflect the sun onto a central tower, and which account for as much as 40% of a facility's construction cost. Most heliostats are a collection of mirrors arranged planarly on a single support to move as one. Their height and large surface area demand a substantial support frame and pedestal for stability and survivability in high winds. In an attempt to minimize the size of these structures, NREL introduced this design for a 16-panel cable state heliostat. Its overall weight is lower, but being a planar array, the target at the top of the tower must be at least as large as the reflected area. And the larger the tower, the more expensive the venture. One may think that each of the mirrors in a planar array can be individually focused onto the target. But that would make it a parabolic heliostat, which can only focus its reflection on an external target if the light source is stationary. Otherwise, the target will have to move in conjunction with the mirrors. And I think we can all agree it would be unfeasible to build too many monstrosities such as this. An alternative is individually mounted mirrors, which are lower to the ground, lessening their wind exposure but they still need to be stout enough to resist vibrations, plus they need to have a separate motor and tracking system, which is cost prohibitive for deployment on commercial scales. A linear solar tracking array combines the stability and reflecting area of a planar array with the lower profile and tighter focus afforded by individually controlled mirrors. It's based on the principle that the sun is, for all intents, an infinitely distant source, Thus, if every mirror in a linear array is aligned north to south with the target, they will bisect the same angle throughout the day. If the mirrors are aligned north to south but not with the target, they will bisect a different angle, but will also remain on target provided they all move at the same rate. This prototype is aligned neither north to south nor with the target. It faces southwest, yet works by the same principle. Two control cables run the length of the array, a lower one for tilting the panels up and down and an upper one for tilting them from side to side. The tailpieces on each support allows for these movements to be independent, and they are all identical except for the last one in a string, which is configured to maintain constant tension on the control cables throughout all degrees of freedom permitted by design. The control cables are driven by two 12-volt DC motors. With the gear reduction, they turn their respective pulleys at a quarter RPM, moving the panels in sync very slowly, yet it is still much more than sufficient to keep pace with the sun's trek across the sky. Here the array is recentering itself using four mirrors and a light-sensitive camera. This method is adequate for controlling a single string, but impractical for controlling multiple ones. For that, it would be better to use an already well-established tracking method. The process of aligning a linear array entails bouncing a laser off each mirror and centering their reflections on the target. Once aligned with the targets, the mirrors can only be focused on that point in space and no other, which may be a good safety feature in the event an array loses track for any reason. The panels used for this prototype are 1 8 inch thick standard glass mirrors. They are relatively inexpensive compared to acrylic mirrors, have a higher reflectivity and a greater abrasion resistance, which is a particular benefit for facilities in desert environments. I've cut these down to 24 inches squared and have drilled holes in the center and the corners. 
The holes are for attachment to the support frame, which have notches in their ends to permit panel warping. Here an unwarped panel is reflected onto the side of the building. By adjusting the tension on the corners with respect to the center, the mirror may be defocused, or better yet, focused. This ability makes it possible to concentrate more light on a smaller target, allowing it to reach higher temperatures while reducing the size and structure required to support it. Again, this prototype uses two foot square mirrors, and it has nine panels. Longer arrays with larger mirrors, say three or four foot square, would be more suitable for commercial use. Larger panels will likely need to be thicker, perhaps three sixteenths or a quarter inch thick, depending on a trade-off between tensile strength and flexibility. This is a diagram of how a field of arrays might be arranged around a power tower. If they are staggered in height so that they do not interfere with adjacent strings, they may even be more tightly packed than shown here in order to capture the maximum amount of sun. Solar concentrators are considerably more efficient at capturing the sun's energy than photovoltaic cells or vegetation because they utilize more radiation across the spectrum. So instead of employing them solely for the production of electricity, we may be better served to use them for what they can do best, to generate heat. Industry accounts for roughly a third of the energy consumed, and 70% of that is devoted to heating processes. Most of that is generated using fuels that release greenhouse gases. This is of particular importance in regards to renewable energy. For as with most chemical processes, whether it be biodiesel, ethanol, biomethanol, or bio-oil, heat drives many of the critical processes, from distillation to steam generation to the endothermic reactions for converting raw materials into high-grade biofuels. And now, as greater emphasis is being placed on carbon intensity life cycles of these fuels, it is becoming more important than ever that we produce them as greenly as possible. There are few cleaner sources than concentrated solar power. Note the reason it is not closer to zero on this chart due to the massive amount of steel and concrete that goes into the construction of a CSP plant. But we can reduce the amount of these materials by developing more efficient designs. Not only because it makes good economic sense, but because it is the right thing to do as faithful stewards of our planet. If you would like more information about this project, please contact me, Bill Walden, at waldenrenewables at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.